Hey, today we're talking about the truth about zombie cells and how they impact your overall health and increase inflammation in your body. So zombie cells are also called senescent cells. These are old or aged cells in the body that have stopped functioning properly and they've stopped dividing and they're actually resistant to death, right? So they, there's natural death signals in normal cells when the cells are no longer functioning well. Well, they'll commit, in a sense, cell suicide. They'll actually give their lives up for the good of the whole. What happens with zombie cells is they've actually, they're distracted from those signals, right? So they're, those cells are not producing those signals. So they're just taking up space also, they're taking energy away from normal healthy cells and they produce a whole cocktail of pro-inflammatory compounds that actually poison the other cells around the body, right? And so they're actually very detrimental to our overall health. Now, all of us have some degree of zombie cells in our body. However, the more that we can get rid of these and replace them with new, young, stress-resilient cells, the better we're gonna feel, the better we're gonna function, and the better we're gonna age. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there's a couple ways. Now first off, zombie cells, a couple things that they do in the body, um, when we look at it from a cellular level, is they actually throw off methylation, which is a way that our cells communicate with each other, and a way that we have proper genetic expression. So they throw off DNA methylation, they, um, they have telomere shortening, and that's kind of a signal for accelerated biological aging, right? So accelerated aging in our body. Also, we end up with uh, damage to our DNA. We end up with uh, misfolded proteins, which accelerates the aging process and doesn't allow cells to carry out normal functions. Just a whole litany of different things that zombie cells do. So when it comes to longevity and overall health, zombie cells are our enemy. We've got to get rid of these things. We've got to replace them again with new, young, stress-resilient cells. So how do we go about doing that? Well, what we want to do here is we want, first off, to make sure that we are eating a blood sugar stabilizing diet. So we have to get insulin down in order to really get rid of senescent or zombie cells. So as long as insulin, which is this hormone that takes sugar out of the bloodstream and puts it into the cells, as long as insulin's elevated in our bloodstream, we're not gonna be able to get rid of these zombie cells. So insulin is the trigger. So once it goes below a certain threshold, it tells the body, okay, we're in a period of time, we're, in, we're at a fast or a, a time of famine, so now is a time to clean house, right? We need to clean and repair our cells. As long as insulin's elevated, it tells our cells, okay, we're in a feasting period of time, and it's time to build, to divide cells, and to continue to grow. So we need to reduce growth signals and increase healing and repair signals. So that starts with a good blood sugar stabilizing diet so we don't get big insulin spikes. So when we eat a meal, insulin only goes up a little bit. And then the longer we go between meals, insulin goes down lower and lower and lower and ultimately gets below a certain threshold. If we're looking at it on a fasted blood work test, let's say you fast for 12 to 14 hours, you go in, get your blood work, let's say you stopped eating at 7 p.m., you went in, you got your blood work done at 8.30 in the morning your insulin level should be below six. So when you look at your fasting insulin, it should always be below six, ideally somewhere in that two to five range. That's telling me that your body is able to get insulin down, you're able to undergo some level of autophagy where your body starts breaking down these old damaged cellular proteins and starts to regenerate new healthy cellular proteins. You're metabolically healthy if your fasting insulin is under six. So that is really key. And that's one test that you can do to look at how well your body's getting rid of these senescent zombie cells. So blood sugar stabilizing diet looks like this. High protein, 30 to 50 grams per meal. Healthy fats, right? We wanna make sure our fats are coming from grass-fed, pasture-raised animal products, as well as things like high polyphenol, extra virgin olive oil, avocados. Those are gonna be good, good healthy fat sources. We wanna do everything we can to avoid seed oils, corn oil, soybean, safflower, cottonseed, peanut oil, all these toxic seed oils, really detrimental to our overall metabolic health and our overall functionality. And they're gonna drive up, for consuming those, they're gonna drive up these, uh, the production of these zombie cells. And so good blood sugar stabilizing diet is super key. 
of course, we want to make sure that we are reducing stress, prioritizing really good sleep. When we sleep, particularly when our circadian rhythm is in alignment, where we're going to bed at a good time, right? So we're going to bed shortly after dark, we're avoiding blue light. What happens then is we're going to produce more growth hormone and more melatonin. Growth hormone is our quintessential anti-aging hormone. It tells all, all the tissues, it preserves lean body mass, it helps to burn fat, it helps to regenerate the immune system. So it's working at a higher tissue level to create stronger, healthier cells. And then melatonin is this powerful, not only is a sleep hormone, but is a powerful uh, mitochondrial antioxidant where actually slip into the double membrane of the mitochondria, reduce oxidative stress, and protect mitochondria. It also help to get rid of damaged mitochondria and damaged senescent zombie cells. And so good sleep is super key. And then we wanna incorporate some level of fasting, right? So intermittent fasting is a powerful strategy to get rid of these zombie cells. You could do something like eat your meals in a six or eight hour eating window, right? So instead of eating your meals from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you eat your meals from, let's say, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., so an eight-hour eating window, or a six-hour eating window, where you eat from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. When you're able to do that, that gives your body more time to undergo repair. So from the time you stop eating to the time you start eating the next day, we call that our cleansing or repair phase. From the time you start eating to the time you stop eating, so if you eat from 12 to 6, that's your building phase. Right? We want to spend more time in our cleansing and repair phase than we do in our building phase. And so um, if we can spend, let's say, three times the amount of time, right? if we're fasting for three times the amount as we are eating in our eating window, we're going to get more repair. We're going to get more autophagy. We're going to break down more of these zombie senescent cells and get rid of them and repair, help, repair cells and create new, stronger, healthier, more stress-resilient cells. The only way we're gonna be able to fast well like that though is a blood sugar stabilizing diet. Prioritizing protein when we are eating, prioritizing healthy fats, making sure we've got the colorful fruits and vegetables that, um, that are good for our body that provide a, a key array of, of different nutrients, right? So that is key, making sure we're doing the intermittent fasting. And then I recommend fasted exercise. What is fasted exercise? It's when we're actually exercising in this fasted state. So perhaps you exercise, the best way to do it is exercise right at the end of your fasted state. So if you've been fasting for 16 hours or 18 hours, that last hour you're exercising, or last half hour you are exercising, and ideally getting some level of high intensity exercise, whether it's resistance training or high intensity interval training. Exercise is a powerful stimulus to break down old damaged senescent cells, these zombie cells. And when we combine it with fasting, we're kind of priming the pump. In a sense, we're almost like cocking a slinky, right? We're kind of pushing down that slinky. And now when we exercise, so fasting is pushing, priming the slinky. And now when we exercise, that slinky explodes. And now we're really getting rid of uh, a lot of these zombie cells. And then we're going to replace them. Once, once we get nutrients in our body, we're now going to replace those zombie cells with new, young, uh, stress-resilient stem cells that are going to rise up in our body and provide the, the kind of cells that are going to help us function at a really high level. So intermittent fasting, fasting exercise, really key here. You can also undergo a longer fast, like a three or five day fast. It could be a water fast or it could be something like the fasting mimicking diet, which is a partial fast. If you go to Prolon, uh, online or El Nutra, you can find the fasting mimicking diet. I also have a great article on, my, on drjockers.com all about the fasting mimicking diet and the amount of studies that are being done on this diet. We're you're actually eating foods, you actually order it, it comes in a box, you're eating foods, it is a calorie restricted diet. It's got the macronutrients all locked in. You don't have to think about food, you just eat what they have in each box. And they've done study after study after study showing that this five-day fasting mimicking diet is getting rid of these zombie cells. It's driving up growth hormone levels, driving up autophagy, and driving up stem cell production. And so it is clinically efficacious and clinically proven to be a way to get rid of these zombie cells and to promote better biological aging in our body. So that's another strategy 
that you can apply is a longer fast or a fasting mimicking diet. So that's key. Um, exercise in general, super key. You can also do things like get extreme heat exposure. When you get in a sauna, any type of sauna, um, it could be a dry sauna, it could be an infrared sauna, it could be a steam sauna. The very high heat temperature is gonna stimulate heat shock proteins, which are gonna break down these zombie cells in our body. So getting in a really hot sauna can be really helpful. I like infrared saunas because you also get the benefit of infrared, right, which is a form of photobiomodulation where these certain rays of light are going in and they're supporting healthy mitochondrial function. They're actually increasing the amount of mitochondrial melatonin production to protect the mitochondria. So getting in a sauna on a regular basis is one of the most powerful ways to get rid of zombie cells. You can also get cold exposure, like doing a cold plunge, for example. A cold plunge will actually trigger cold shock proteins, which do the same thing. They get rid of these zombie cells that can adapt to their environment well. It's a trigger when we're in cold environments or extreme heat to get rid of these low functioning cells and uh, just get rid of them out of the body and replace them with new stress resilient stem cells. So heat exposure, extreme cold exposure, really powerful ways. And then you can use synolytic herbs and compounds, things that we can consume in supplemental form, for example, that help to get rid of these zombie cells. That's gonna be things like proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes are enzymes that break down and digest protein. If you take them with a meal, they're gonna help you break down your protein in your food. If you take them away from meals, they're gonna go into your bloodstream and they're gonna scavenge abnormal proteins. That could be um, different cytokines or immune uh, inflammatory triggers that are being released from these zombie cells, they will break those down. Once they break those down, they'll actually go in and start to break down the damaged proteins that are in the zombie cells and start to repair the zombie cells or, or actually help trigger the death of the zombie cells. So proteolytic enzymes are powerful. You can also do different herbs, things like curcumin, for example, which is the active compound in turmeric, carvacrol, which is in oregano, rosmarinic acid and rosemary. You've got things like berberine, which is a great synolytic. You've got things like even coffee, caffeic acid actually, and the coffee and chlorogenic acid can have a synolytic effect. Ginger, right, gingerols in the ginger. So a lot of these herbal compounds can be really helpful. Green tea, which has catechin antioxidants, that's another trigger for these. You've got things like resveratrol and quercetin that, uh, that can trigger uh, the breakdown of these zombie cells. So a number of different supplemental uh, factors that you can add in, but you know what? You really first wanna create the environment, right? So all the initial steps, good sleep, circadian rhythm, making sure we're reducing our exposure to toxins, which are a major driver for, for the production of zombie cells, making sure we're healing our gut lining, making sure that we are eating a really good, healthy uh, blood sugar stabilizing diet, practicing intermittent fasting, getting exercise in, um, perhaps even doing one of these longer fasts or a fasting mimicking diet. That's all kind of the foundation. Um, we can also use heat and cold like we talked about. And then finally, these synolytics, right? That's when they come in and they can kind of give us the final bump, right? To get rid of as many of these zombie cells as possible, replace them with good, young, embryonic stem cells. Uh, you know, basically these young, stress-resilient stem cells that are gonna allow us to be able to function and thrive and be as stress resilient as possible in our own life. That's gonna help your brain, your energy, it's gonna help every element of your life. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video. Please share it with people that you know and that you care about as well. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my channel, browse the various videos that I've done on similar topics, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button, that way you get notified whenever I put up a new video training. Thanks so much for being a part of our community here, and I really hope you enjoy the videos that we're putting out on a regular basis. Be blessed.